everybody. Uh, very honored to, uh, to get a chance to share uh, this message. Um, it's definitely near and dear to my heart. It's not quite as, uh, it's not a change the world message, but it is a change your business, uh, which would give you the opportunity to change the world. Um, give you a little background, because the, the story, I think, uh, helps kind of set up some of the things I'm going to talk about. Uh, I grew up in Ohio, uh, so I didn't grow up um, in the affluent community, per se. I uh, grew up on a farm. And uh, if you get straight A's in, in school, you typically go be a doctor or a lawyer inside straight A's. And so I started Malone. I uh, had a little side business and was going to go be a doctor. I was pre-med. And uh, fell off the ladder that, uh, that I was working on twice in about two months' time. And I realized I was going to end up being a patient versus actually being a doctor. And so I started looking for other opportunities. I, I found an opportunity with a company called Cutco in Vector Marketing and started interning with them. And was very fortunate to be dating a girl at the time. Her, uh, her dad was an attorney. And I started selling Cutco, if, you, if you're not familiar with Cutco, it's a 60-year-old brand. There's been over a million reps that have come through their doors in the last 60 years. And uh, I was scared to death. I mean, I, I put on my glasses to look smarter in the interview, wore the only tie I had, and, and, uh, and got hired into their internship program. And was fortunate to, to have this mentor in my life, this, this girlfriend's dad. He was an attorney, he was the kind of guy that made all of his money, it seemed, off of everything other than being an attorney. Uh, he seemed to be involved with every oil well and every real estate deal and every bank opportunity. And I started watching Paul and realizing that he was one of the most generous people that I'd ever seen. I probably, it probably stood out more because I grew up without money, but I recognized that he would find a deal on something random like noodles, and he'd end up buying a semi-load, and everybody at church the next Sunday would end up with a year's supply of noodles. He would buy, uh, for the local Christian school, they'd have a Harley up for raffle, and he'd end up buying a third of the tickets, win the Harley, and donate it back. And so I went to Paul, and I said, Paul, um, you're always giving away things. What, what about giving away some pocket knives with your name on it or whatever else? And uh, he looked at me, and he got this twinkle in his eye, and he said, what about the paring knives and the, some of the other pieces? Can you put my, my name, or could I buy those as gifts? And I said, Paul, all your guys, you know, all your clients are men. Why would you want to give out a paring knife to a guy? And he said, uh, because they're all married. If I take care of the wife, it's amazing how everything takes care of itself. And so over the course of the, the next couple of years, I went from a rep to being Cutco's largest international distributor over those three years' time, from a sophomore to a senior. I was skipping class to hire people. And what I found out was... It really wasn't about the knife, per se. It wasn't about the gift, per se. But it was all these different strategies that Paul had incorporated into his life, his generosity, his giving. And so when most people hear the word gift, game, game-changing gift strategy, you know, they get ready to, you know, to hit the pause or to take a nap or to leave the auditorium because they're like, gifting, really? Like, that's game-changing? Because most people in their mind, like if I ask the audience here, how many of you guys have a large gifting budget for your business. And maybe a handful of people would raise their hand yes, but 90% of the audience would say no because in their mind, what they're thinking of is the pen or the tchotchke or the fruit basket or the polo shirt with an emblem the size of a softball on it. They don't think about gifting the way that, that I've learned to think about gifting, the way that we've taught our clients to think about gifting. And so what I want to share with you a little bit about gifting is is the type of gifting that you'd give to your spouse or the type of gifting that you'd give to your son when he graduates college, that custom suit, like that type of gifting, not the promotional, because most people get mixed up. There's promotional products and then there's giving in business. And I'm gonna talk to you about, a little bit about giving and, and some of the things that I've learned uh, to avoid mistake-wise that most people are unfortunately making on a regular basis in business. There's 16 mistakes. I'm not gonna be able to get through all of them, and so I'm going to share as many as I can, and then there'll be an opportunity on the, on the website to be able to download the rest of them. But one of the first things that Paul shared with me, through action, not necessarily word, I, I referenced earlier, which was taking care of the spouse. Most of the time in business, it's, it's generally male-dominated. You know, you go into the oil and gas world, it's all men. You go into finance, it's 80% men. And so the tendency, one of the first mistakes that we make when we're gifting people is we try to gift the, the executive. And so we give out wine or scotch or we give out golf-related items. We, um, 
we miss a huge opportunity because if we're going to try to impress a guy, we have to spend a lot of money because if he's into golf, he's got the best Callaway or the best tailor-made. But the person who's oftentimes neglected in the gifting experiences, in the cigar outings and the different things, is the wife. And so Paul nailed it. Paul nailed it. He had been doing it for 40 years. Every one of his gifts was family friendly. And so that if, you're, if you're taking notes, that's number one. Take care of the spouse and the kids. Forget about the executive. He's already got enough jackets. He's already got enough hats and enough bottles of wine. Everybody else is doing that. So take care of the wife or take care of the other significant other. Number two, in almost every brochure that you see, people talk about being world class and amazing customer service. All these words that evoke first class and high end and best. And then it comes time to, to appreciate the people that are most important in your world, your suppliers, your clients, your employees. And you look for the cheapest thing that you can put your logo as big as possible and, that, and that's your way of building this great relationship with people. It's sad, but it's true, and we've all done it in one way, shape, or form. And so if you're going to say that your business is world-class, that you're best in class, that referrals are really important to you, give a gift that is just as world-class. So if you're giving a mug, make it a $50 mug. It's the, they're going to use it every day. Make it the best that you possibly can. If you're giving a watch, don't give a Fossil or a Timex. Those are great watches, but if you're giving it to somebody that's, that likes watches or that is gonna, you know, that's part of the affluent that's making six or seven figures, they already have a Rolex or a Breitling on their wrist. And so even though you spent $100 on this gift and you're so proud of it, it's going to go into the drawer. Best case scenario, it's going to get donated to Goodwill. Now, they're never going to tell you that. They, no, nobody ever writes a letter and says, thank you so much for your beautiful Timex watch. I made a nice donation to Goodwill. Thank you very much. Have you ever got a note like that? No, but it's like, it's like telling somebody that their baby's ugly. Like, you're never going to say it. It's just not polite. And I know that sounds crass. But the, the simple fact is that we're so politically correct in, in our culture is that you're lucky to get a handwritten thank you at best, but nobody's ever going to be honest with you about your gifts. And so if you're going to give, you know, for instance, we've taken this to the nth degree, and even our business cards. You only have so many touch points with a client, and you talk about being first class or world class. We said, what are the things that we're handing out to our customers? Are, is everything communicating the value proposition and the core values? Is everything really world class? If we say we're this world class gifting organization and we're teaching these world class values, is every touch point meeting that, that level, that benchmark? And so we looked at our cards and they're made out of paper and they're pretty much the same as everybody else's. Maybe they had a little bit of foil on them to kind of look fancy. And I said, what would the best business card on the planet look like? What, what, most cards cost five cents, 10 cents. What if we spent a dollar or two dollars or even three dollars on a business card, which is 3,000% more than what anybody else would. And so our first iteration cost about a dollar. These ones retail for about three dollars. But when we hand this to somebody in the suite, you know, the UPS CEO, last night I got the opportunity to, to meet Dave Farr, the, the CEO and president of Emerson. When he gets my card, it communicates, even though I only spent $3 on it, it communicates that we are world class, we, we walk the talk, and there's so many times in business, the little details, you're like, oh, I can cut on that, or I can, I can that, that'll be fine. And it's better to not do something than to, do it, to not do it world class. One of the other things that, uh, that I, I, I see is pretty commonplace is, in general, people, myself included, we're all kind of followers. And so, a cool gift comes out, and we get all excited. Apple's a perfect example of this. The first year that the Apple iPad came out, it was really a great gift. But by the time that car dealerships are giving it out for test drives, it's no longer a cool gift. And yet we, you know, billions of dollars worth of Apple products are being given out every single year, and somebody's getting their third iPad and their fourth iPad Touch and their fourth set of Bose headphones, and their whatever it is. So when you're giving somebody a gift, it doesn't matter what it is, make sure that it's not something that's been given 
a thousand times. Look for something that's really unique, that's really different. We all talk about our business being different and we're unique and whatever else, and then we all give the same 10 items, pad folios, Tiffany bowls, um, Bose headphones. There, I could literally walk into a room and if I listed off 20 items, I would be able to, with those 20, get a 90% accuracy rate of what somebody is giving out. Because we all follow that same pattern. And so when you're going to give a gift and you're saying it's to your most important people, Paul was perfect at this. He would just come out with these wild gifts. I mean, who buys a year's supply of noodles for somebody? Nobody. But that person, every single week of every single day, would remember Paul. And he would get the first phone call when somebody had this crazy idea of starting this bank. He'd end up with shares in the bank just because he was top of mind, because he gave knives, because he gave noodles, because he gave whatever it was. It was unique. It was different. It was world class. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make in the gifting world and in business in general, you're dealing with these affluent people and we all know that remembering somebody's name is one of the most important things you can do. You meet somebody and you see them six months later and if you can remember their name when you, when you shake their hand, it's like gold. We know that people's names are important. When, when you're dealing with people that have a ton of money and they're up in age, they start giving that money away to colleges and to hospitals. One reason is because those are great institutions that are gonna give back to society. But the second reason that they give out those huge chunks of money, Stephen Ross, who owns the Dolphins, he literally just gave $200 million to the University of Michigan. Was it just because he loved the University of Michigan? Partly. But guess what? Every single building that's in athletics and on that campus is going to be named after. It's the Stephen A. Ross gymnastics class. It's the Stephen A. I mean, pretty much everything on that campus is going to be named after Stephen A. Ross. It's one of the top gifts ever. Our name is so important that we're willing to part with $200 million just to get our name on the side of a building. So let's apply that to gifting. Most of the time, you know, gift decisions are made last minute, and we're like, you know, we just have to do something for these people. And so you end up going to your local promo rep, or you go online to Homeoff Stakes, and you order a thousand of the exact same gift, and you mail it out to your most important relationships, clients, distributors, suppliers, employees, and then you wonder why you don't get a thank you back. Even the smallest, tiniest gift given in business, when it has somebody's name on it, it changes the whole landscape. It's such a simple concept. We all know that, that our names are important. We all know that other people's names are important. And yet we order generic gifts. Or we put our name on it and give it to them as a gift, which I talked about before. It's so just wrong. It's just so wrong. I had some other thoughts and phrases that came to mind, but it's just wrong. If you want to impress people, you want to make people feel special and appreciated, you want to deepen these relationships that you have, you got to, you got to personalize the gift. And if it's even better when you can put the spouse's name and the family name on it. Then it becomes a legacy. Then it becomes something that they're going to pass down for generations. I don't have time to, to dive into any more of the mistakes and the criteria from a gifting perspective. And I understand that gifting may seem like a trivial, just kind of like not important thing. And you know what, it's, you're right. If your business isn't world class, and if you're not a first class company, focus your attention on making sure that your customer service is great and your people skills are great and your training is great. But there's a lot of great companies out there that have not taking this one little lever and one little detail and putting the same amount of attention that they put to gifting and appreciating people that they've applied to every other element of their business. And it's magical when you take and you start appreciating people and putting the same thought process, same strategy into appreciating people and gifting people at that level as you do operations and finance and whatever else. Thanks a lot.